What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel. Today's project is this free mantis tiller and the problem is that it's leaking gas and also it won't start. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video we try and repair this tiller, however it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. So I found this free tiller on the curb after seeing it posted online. There wasn't much information about it other than it wouldn't start. When I picked it up, it was very obvious that it was leaking fuel, so I know they must have put fuel in it to try and use it. They couldn't get it to start, and then it sprung a leak, so out on the curb it went. Now, I'm not sure how old it is, but it's definitely been used for several years by how faded the stickers are. But more importantly, we need to know if the engine is worn out. The easiest way for me to figure that out is to slowly pull on the rope and feel how much the engine is fighting back. And I have to say, this engine is fighting back quite a a bit so I don't think the engine is worn out. Now I'll do a compression test here in a bit to get an actual reading but this is a refreshing change from what I usually get free off the curb. Most of the time it's a machine that's way past its usefulness but it looks like I got lucky this time. Next I want to remove the air filter and put some fuel into the carburetor's throat and try a test start. If it starts it'll confirm that we have spark and compression. If it doesn't then I'll need to use my spark checker to see if we have an ignition problem. Fortunately, it started and ran for several seconds, which is fantastic news, and in my opinion, it also sounded very healthy as well. Next, I'm going to use my compression tester to gauge just how healthy this engine actually is. The compression tester will measure how much pressure your engine can make on the compression stroke, and the higher the better. A low reading would indicate that either the piston rings or the valves are worn or leaking. You can find these online for less than $20, and to use it, just remove the spark plug and install the hose into the engine, squeeze the trigger, and pull the rope several times. So the reading is almost 130 PSI, which is a very healthy reading. It means that it was ran with the correct oil and fuel mixture most of its life and wasn't abused during that time. The next thing I want to do is remove the carburetor and inspect it for any problems. More than likely, the leak was coming from it, so I'm guessing the metering diaphragm is not only petrified but pushing on the rocker arm for the needle. This wouldn't shut off the fuel flow through the carburetor and allow the fuel to leak out of it. First thing I like to do is remove the pumping side of the carburetor. This will give us an opportunity to inspect the pumping diaphragm. And what we're looking for is that these two check valve flaps are flat and parallel with the rest of the diaphragm. The easiest way is to look at it from the side. This one is still parallel so we can reuse it. If yours isn't, then I would consider getting a rebuild kit, but I would just get a new carburetor instead because it's easier to find than some kits. The next thing I want to do is inspect the inlet screen. I want to make sure it's not clogged with dirt or debris, which ours isn't. There are a few pieces of something on it, so we'll clean that off here in a bit after we take off the needle and rocker arm from the other side of the carburetor. Next, I want to remove the primer bulb section so we can inspect the metering diaphragm. So here's the diaphragm, and it's definitely in rough shape. It's a bit stiff, and it's lower than it's supposed to be. That would explain why it's leaking fuel, so we definitely need to replace it. Now, when replacing these, the most important part is the length of the stem in the middle of this metal wheel. They're either long or short, and this one happens to be the short version. Next, I'll remove the needle and rocker arm assembly so we can safely clean it with carb cleaner. Just be very careful, as these parts are very tiny and are very easy to lose, especially the spring. The other thing we need to do is confirm that fuel will flow through the inlet screen. Just put some fuel on the screen and watch for it to disappear through it. If it doesn't, then you'll need to remove the screen and clean it with some carb cleaner, and you might have to agitate it with something to break up the varnish that's on it. Once the carb is clean, we can then reassemble it along with the new metering diaphragm. These can be bought individually for a few dollars, but I usually buy them in bulk, which makes them a better deal. Once you reassemble the rocker arm assembly, press on it to make sure it's moving and returning to position like it's supposed to. Then make sure the gasket goes on the carburetor first, followed by the metering diaphragm. And even though the primer bulb isn't broken, I'm going to replace it anyway. That way I don't have to worry about it breaking anytime soon. 
Another reason why this engine would be leaking fuel could be a broken fuel line that's either hardened over time or cracked near the brass port on the carburetor. Since the fuel in the tank is at the same level as the carb, if the line is broken, fuel will continue to leak out of it as long as there's pressure in the tank from the fuel. Now that the carburetor is back on the engine, I'll put some fresh fuel in the tank, press the primer bulb till it fills up, and then try starting it. If your primer bulb doesn't fill up, it means that there's no fuel in the carburetor and will more than likely not start. You might have to take the carburetor apart and inspect it for any problems along with the fuel lines. So it finally started, but I had to keep it mostly choked, and also when I tried to rev the engine, it also died. That means that the engine isn't getting enough fuel to start properly, and not enough to rev up either. With that bit of information, I'm going to adjust the carburetor to give it more fuel at lower engine speeds. I'm also going to turn the idle adjustment screw clockwise, because introducing more fuel at lower speeds will lower the idle speed, so we don't want the engine to die. And to give more fuel at lower speeds, I'm going to turn the L screw, which is closer to the engine, counterclockwise about a half turn. So after the adjustments, it seems to work a lot better now, but I need to try it on some dirt to make sure I don't need to adjust the carburetor when the engine is under a load.
Now once the tines broke through the hard bit on the surface, it didn't jump around as much and it seems to work pretty well. I'm sure it'd work a whole lot better in a garden setting. The area that I'm testing in hasn't seen any rainfall for several days. So my question is, do you have a real need for one of these little tillers? I just worked on a larger one and it had a lot more power and covered more area than this, but at least you could carry this one around with just one hand. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions and hope to see you in the next video.